So we have Daniel Fulmer, and his talk is called Robotnics, Build Android, AOSP, Using Nix. And the topic of this talk is that Robotnix enables a user to build Android images using the Nix Package Manager. AOSP projects often contain long and complicated build instructions, requiring a variety of tools for fetching source code and executing an incredibly convoluted one, like it was mentioned. And just some brief background about um, Daniel is that he started using NixOS in 2015, and he just really liked the model and just got into it right away. He was a recent graduate from PhD from Yale for electrical engineering and focusing on control theory and distributing compute. He also started as a chief scientist at Achilles Heel Technologies this year. And his interests outside of NixOS are actually um, weightlifting and powerlifting. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Take it away, Puck. So Robotnics is a project I've been working on over the last uh, year to year and a half. Um, which aims to build Android, or more specifically, the Android open source project using the Nix Package Manager. And before I go to Robotnics, I want to briefly describe how you might go about building Android by following the instructions on the android.com website. So, to begin, they recommend that you use Ubuntu 18.04, and like many projects, they have you apt get install a whole set of dependencies. There is, additionally, there's a tool that you need to get um, called repo or git repo, um, which will fetch the Android source code. And this is a tool that manages the large collection of git uh, repositories and git trees and puts them into a single uh, source tree. So in order to use this, you need to create a directory, run repo init, and then repo sync and download roughly, if I recall, roughly 40 to 50 gigabytes worth of source code. And you'll have to know the, the name of the git tag that corresponds to the latest re Android release. And finally, to build the code, and specifically, we'll have it built for the Google Pixel 3 XL, which has the code name of crosshatch. You can run those following three commands. And then wait for a very, very long time. Um, on my old computer, it used to take roughly eight hours. Um, I got a much faster computer that can do it in just over 30, 30 minutes. But uh, the at the end of this process, you'll have a number of build products under a certain subdirectory. And this is the, so these are the instructions that are on the android.com website. However, there's a number of limitations to those instructions. So for instance, the, uh, the kernel and the Chromium web view that are included in this will be in the source tree. And these are pre-built versions of the kernel and Chromium web view. And so they're oftentimes out of date and don't correspond to the latest secure release. It'll also be missing proprietary vendor binaries that are required um, for your Android image to work on a real Pixel 3 device. And finally, this build wouldn't be signed with secure signing keys. It would actually be signed by a set of keys called test keys, which are just for development and testing. Uh, the, all the issues that I just mentioned, there's documentation on the internet about how to go about solving all of those things, but they're not readily accessible and they require many more steps, especially for something like building Chromium WebView, which is an entirely different build system. So in contrast, Robotnix aims to make this process much, much more simple. So here to build a Pixel 3 XL image, you'll just git clone uh, the Robotnix uh, URL, and then run nix build uh, by passing an argu a configuration argument, where here we're just uh, selecting the crosshatch device, which corresponds to the Pixel 3, and we're choosing the vanilla flavor of AOSP. And then you can flash the result, the resulting image, um, after it finishes building. So it's much, much simpler than the, the standard sets of instructions you go about uh, for, for building Android. And it includes all the dependencies and handles all of the, the tricky complexities about integrating all of those sets of projects. So you might ask, you know, why would you want to use Nix um, for doing this sort of a thing? And Nix, in particular, for this type of a project, is very good at integrating all of the diverse build tools across all of these diverse project ecosystems, including Android and Chromium and the Linux kernel. It also has great guarantees around the reliability and reproducibility. Um, in particular, the, the default Nix sandbox ensures that 
um, your code is depending only on explicitly defined inputs. So Android 10 actually does a little bit of sandboxing of their builds now with a tool called NSJL, um, which at least uh, disables network access, which has been quite nice for the rest of the, Nix the Android ecosystem because it restricts them from being able to have a script that just goes and randomly downloads some source from somewhere else. You have to have everything um, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the, the process. And additionally, Nix will require all of the built inputs to be hashed and we can't sneak in any impurities in through other means. So then some of the broad goals of the Robotnik's project um, uh, are simplicity. I'd like it to be very simple to use. You shouldn't have to know anything about the Android build system or the Chromium build system in order to use Robotnik's and build Android images. Additionally, I'd like it to have some measure of customizability. And I recognize that is somewhat in conflict with the goal of simplicity but I hope that we can tow a fine line between uh, the two values. An another goal that I have is on reproducibility, and here I mean bit-for-bit -bit reproducibility, by which I mean any two people should be able to, if they build the same configuration, they should receive the exact same output, bit-for-bit. Um, -bit. There should be no difference between the output files. I'm also interested in authenticity, specifically the authenticity of the build inputs uh, that the source code is from comes from authentic sources, and specifically some of those proprietary vendor binaries that I talked about previously, I'd like to get them from authentic sources like, for instance, the vendor themselves. Uh, additionally, I'm interested in security and privacy. Um, Robotnik's doesn't do anything particularly new in terms of security on Android, but we at least try to maintain the Android security model um, in terms of things like uh, Android Verified Boot, for instance. Um, this is in contrast to some other projects uh, other popular projects. And additionally, privacy, because we're building uh, open source uh, Android builds that don't include things such as the Google Play services, um, we potentially uh, mitigate a number of privacy uh, threats. So returning to that goal of customizability, Robotnik's uses like a NixOS style module system that allows us to select what options we want to enable or disable. Um, and here I've included a, a example configuration, and I'll, I'll discuss some of these options um, in terms of each of these modules in the future, in the coming slides. Some of those modules including things like choosing which flavor to build, um, things having to do with Chromium and WebView, the Linux kernel, and others. So the flavors that Robotnik's currently supports is we support the vanilla AOSP. This is the source directly from android.googlesource.com. And I, this has been updated to the Android 11 release, which was released last month. And it f focuses on just the Pixel phones for now, the Google Pixel phones. Um, we also support uh, another Android project called Graphene OS, which is a privacy and security focused projects, which does a number of an hardening uh, of the Android operating system. And it also is on Android 11 and focuses on Pixel phones. Finally, there's uh, probably the most popular Android project, Lineage OS, um, which uh, I added a couple months ago in what I call experimental support because I don't personally use Lineage OS. Um, and so some of the uh, Lineage OS things might conflict with some of the Robotnik's modules, and I haven't tested all the combinations of those things yet. But I believe it's still on Android 10. I don't, I don't believe any devices are on Android 11 yet. Uh, but however, and Lineage OS has a great support for a, a very large number of devices. I already talked a bit about how um, Robotnik's builds the Chromium and the Chromium WebView from source. So the Android system WebView uh, is the component which allows all these Android apps to display web content. And it really is uh, an, uh, it's a necessary component of the Android system. You can't really build a usable uh, Android uh, image without having an Android WebView. So it's nice to be able to build it from source. And in fact, we can build a couple of Chromium forks, including uh, Bromite, which focuses on privacy, and Vanadium, which focuses on security as well. I also have some options to enable custom Linux kernels. You can uh, have your kernel source come from any other um, source tree, as well as allow you to easily patch the kernel that's included in the Android build. Uh, additionally, uh, we enable uh, you to easily sign the, your build with your own custom-generated keys. So you can have a set of Android signing keys, which you control and only you control. 
Um, and these keys are would be necessary for you to sideload updates or do over-the-air updates. Um, that, in that way, you can control the software that runs on your phone. It has to be signed by keys that you control. Uh, additionally, Pixel phones have a very nice feature uh, with regard to the verified boot, where they allow you to set a u they have a user settable root of trust, um, which corresponds to your uh, your custom Android keys. So this is all part of the verified boot sort of methodology, where you have a read-only system image, and any modifications of that image have to be signed by keys uh, that are trusted in this very low level, uh, b below the bootloader even. <laughs> There's also a module that uh, allows you to do over-the-air updates. Um, this, uh, there was an updater app from Graphene OS, which has been incorporated into Robotnik's, and we allow you to set a custom URL um, that this can check for updates against. Um, so it needs to point to a directory containing those update files, as well as some metadata, and we and you have a simple derivation that allows you to easily create uh, such a directory. There's also a module for F-Droid, which is the free and open source Android app repository. It also comes with a privilege extension, which allows you to easily install apps without having to enable some of these extra options, like the unknown sources uh, option. In a similar way, like the Google Play doesn't have this restriction. Um, additionally, you, the privilege extension allows you to install updates in the background without having to go manually click install on every single update that you care about. There's also MicroG which is a re-implementation of a number of Google's proprietary uh, Android user space apps and libraries. Um, so this re-implements parts of the Google Play services. Um, a number of apps, unfortunately, require Google Play services to work. Um, but I've tested things like um, push notifications through MicroG uh, work well in Robotnik's. Finally, there's also a, a very nice backup system called Seed Vault Backup, which uses an internal backup API and like, like on the, um, the Android images from Google directly, where you can uh, back up uh, application configuration to the Google Cloud, Seed Vault similarly allows you to back up uh, application data to like a USB drive or to a hosted Next Cloud or something like that. And then there are two more sort of generic modules that I want to briefly discuss, one of which allows you to easily um, add additional source directories to the, the build itself. Um, so here I have an example of extra-dir, you just set a dot source, and that can be the output of any other Nix derivation, and that uh, the output of that would be included in the Android build. Additionally, I have a patches option, which allows you to very easily uh, enable particular patches on some of these uh, sub, uh, Android sub-projects. And because the Android source tree is so large, like, like I said, 40 or 50 gigabytes, um, if every single time you had to build Android, like the default way it's done in Nix, Nix is to actually copy all of the source every time. Um, I have a little optimization that uh, will do bind mounts uh, to uh, avoid copying the source every single time you want to build Android. Um, and the, the flavors that I talked about previously, the way those flavors are implemented is they mostly just set up the default sets of source directories. Uh, finally, you can also include additional pre-built applications in the image. Um, so here I'm adding an example application um, to some uh, example.apk. So naturally, this could also refer to the output of any other derivation. So if you had something that built an application, you could include it in a Robotnik's image using this option. And the other options, many of the other modules like Seedvault and MicroG are actually implemented using this apps.prebuilt option. So Seedvault is built from source, for instance. It produces an APK, and then we include that APK using this option. I also have a, the ability to launch an emulator uh, with an attached Robotnik's built image. So here we're selecting the x86-64 generic device uh, and building an emulator, and you can run that directly on your desktop. It's, all, it's very nice for conveniently testing out some of the other Robotnik's options, like if you want to test out if MicroG works or if Seedvault works, you can do it. Uh, locally on an emulator. Next, there's the, the SDK. So the Android SDK, which includes some utilities like Fastboot or ADB, which are used for flashing your phone, um, there, Google publishes pre-built versions of the SDK, but they publish them under an additional SDK license. 
Um, however, if you actually look at the code that goes into producing that SDK, it's mostly Apache and GPL. Um, and in fact, the uh, robotics project has a, a little subdirectory, um, the SDK subdirectory, which if you build that, that the derivation in that directory, it'll actually produce a full um, uh, open source SDK for Android, um, including things such as Fastboot and ADB, which would be unencumbered by that SDK license because it's built entirely from uh, permissively licensed sources. So, uh, like I said, one of my goals was reproducibility, and Google actually does a fairly good job with reproducibility of Android builds. Now, there's only a few small patches, um, mostly concerned with things around uh, signing and the target files and some partition uh, impurities. Um, and so in the past, uh, like a month ago, uh, a few months ago, I've verified that the output of Robotnix is actually bit for bit reproducible for both the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 1 on the vanilla flavor. Um, but Lineage OS, we also have some patches to fix a few small um, uh, impurity or, or non-reproducible components of that, and we've tested uh, it to be reproducible on certain devices as well. But a thing that I'd really like to do at some point is to have like an automatically produced reproducibility report, kind of like the, the R13Y re report for the Nix OS uh, minimal ISO. I think it'd be very nice to have that for Robotnix as well. And so the remainder of this talk is going to be um, some ideas for future work on robotics and more speculative things in the, in the future. So one of the big sort of um, limiting factors for building Android is it, the requirement that you have a fairly powerful computer and can fetch a lot of source code. Um, robotics builds most of the Android in a, very, in a single very, very large derivation, uh, which executes that full Android build process and on many machines will take multiple hours up to 8 to 10 to 12, depending on what exactly you're building and how powerful your machine is. But once you've built this derivation, the, the signing step can actually be done on another very small derivation that just depends on the output of that, that large derivation. So you could do something like um, publish the output of that large derivation, a certain set of files called target files, publish it up on uh, S3 or Cachex or any other uh, Nix binary cache and then allow users to um, depend on those pre-built uh, pre versions of the target files, but then still sign those target files with their own locally generated Android signing keys, uh, which would enable them to have a lot of the benefits of customizability, still being able to control their own keys, um, but not necessarily have to rebuild the entire thing themselves. But of course, there are some obvious downsides to that approach, which is that the output is quite large for every single build, a bit over three gigabytes. And every possible configuration of Robotnix produces a different output. Um, so if you wanted to make a build for every single combination of Robotnix options, you'd have an exponentially increasing number of options for every single uh, new, op new option you, uh, you enabled. But maybe you could do something like publish a smaller subset, like maybe just one or two uh, configurations per device, maybe a, a minimal configuration and a more full-featured configuration per device. Here, there's a, a quite a bit more speculative uh, thing that I, I'm quite interested in, which is that if we know that the output of robotics, the target file's output, are bit for bit reproducible, we could do something like have multiple independent builders, um, each of which is producing their own unsigned target files, but then have them sign those with Nix binary cache keys. Um, and there are a couple so Nix subcommands that looked quite interesting. I haven't looked into this in, in full detail yet, but you can do things like verify that a certain number of signatures apply to a particular derivation output. So instead of trusting that a single uh, build farm or build server, um, th this you could uh, distribute that trust a number, among a number of build servers and ensure that uh, so long as a certain, uh, certain threshold of those build servers are building it reproducibly and producing the same output, you can uh, have a bit more trust that the build servers are not compromised in a way that uh, they might produce uh, malicious output. And then, of course, like I said, you can, you can still um, sign this with your own local keys, and you still control the keys that determine what code runs on your device. There's the last thing, which is that that build takes place in one very large derivation, and that changes to that Robotnix configuration will often require a full rebuild. 
Uh, there are some things you can do, like Ccache, but it's it's insufficient for this purpose, unfortunately. Um, but uh, if you could share some common intermediate build products between different configurations, maybe you could build things much more quickly. Um, and I'll describe one uh, attempt I have, a somewhat ambitious attempt at solving this um, with a set of tools. So to do that, I need to uh, briefly describe a little bit about how the Android build system works, which is uh, in the old days, it was entirely make files, um, but they've added a new um, build system uh, called Song or Soong. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, based on uh, what they call blueprint files. But they, um, Song and make files, they both, through this Ccati tool, they both produce, produce ninja files, which are then combined. And that's what's used to actually build the whole thing. But for this, I want to focus on the newer thing, the Song um, and the blueprint files. And I'll look at an example of what a blueprint file looks like. So here, they're building a binary called ext to simg and it's uh, using the, the CC binary song module. And this is a, a module that builds um, binaries from C or C++ source code. And I'll point your attention to the uh, sources. You see it's a list of sources. Here it's just depending on one .c file. And then a list of shared libraries. And these are libraries that are defined in other blueprint files throughout the source tree. But um, if you squint hard enough, you, you notice that this sort of looks like a Nix expression, right? So maybe if you got rid of the colons and you added equals and re added semicolons and looks a little bit more like Nix. Maybe if you uh, assigned this to a variable and wrapped it in like a let block and added a function header or you can pass in CC binary, you could turn these blueprint files into Nix files uh, that could then be evaluated by the Nix uh, package manager. And so that's what the blueprint to Nix uh, utility does. Um, we actually, I actually modified um, the blueprint formatter, the pretty printer, to output Nix files based on blueprint files. However, you still have the problem that you, like, you have to implement that actual module, the CC binary module. Um, and so I, I did a partial implementation of some of the modules, the CC binary and CC library modules in particular. Um, and uh, I actually can build some of these uh, uh, Android modules entirely in Nix. Um, so the derivation level, instead of a, well, a single derivation for the whole thing, you have derivations for each binary and each library. Um, and I can build the ADB and Fastboot utilities using the, the native Clang toolchain from Nix packages. Um, even on uh, ARM64, which is quite nice because Google doesn't even publish um, native binaries for ARM64 for ADB and Fastboot. So already we have a bit of an improvement there. And there, uh, there's great benefits from using Nix here. Obviously, laziness is great. Um, but the, the bigger thing is like the derivations only depend on the source files they explicitly reference. So you only need to download a very small portion of the overall source tree to build some of these utilities. This is in contrast to the way it normally works, where you have to build, download the whole thing, even just to build a very small part. I'll point out this is really a proof of concept and probably not maintainable for all of Android. Like if you wanted to build all of Android using this, um, it would require more than just me to, <laughs> to implement all of the song modules and keep them up to date. But maybe you could just do something like the host, the binaries that are intended to run on the host, like Fastboot and ADB. And maybe that's something that could be in Nix packages someday. And maybe this could point the way to like a potential future Bazel to Nix or Buck to Nix. There's a lot of other um, recent uh, build systems that operate in similar ways to Song, and potentially you could convert them to Nix as well. Uh, just for fun, I put it in. I put a lot of these uh, derivations into Hydra, and just built a ton of uh, things to see how much would work. Is just for fun. <laughs> but some of the final goals is like I'd like to set up some continuous integration to ensure that I'm not breaking Robotniks in the future. I'd also like to have a, some NixOS module or something that integrates with these Robotniks configurations. At the very least, like to automatically set up a, um, an update server that will uh, host the metadata in the, in the uh, OTA files. And then finally, I've, I've been using this on my own phone um, since July of last year on my daily driver, and I haven't lost any data. Um, I haven't had to wipe or reflash this phone. I've only used the over-the-air updates. Um, and so I intend to continue following up with the monthly um, releases that Google provides to keep it secure and up to date. 
Um, so at this point, I'm, I'm trying to work on making Robotnik's useful for other people and not just me. Um, so a lot of that will have to do with documentation. And if anyone is interested in at NixCon uh, over the weekend, I'd love to hear any feedback about uh, pain points or things that uh, I could improve on Robotnik's in the future. And then I'm also happy to, uh, I got some very good news earlier this week, which was that my proposal to the NLNet Foundation on their NGI Zero initiative um, was recently accepted. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to do some funded work on Robotnik's in the future. I, th I think at this point of the stage, we um, need to define some concrete milestones, but it looks like it's past the review, the internal and external reviews process. So I'm very, very excited for the future of Robotnik's. And of course, I'd encourage you to try it out for yourself. Um, go check it out at github.com slash danielfulmer slash robotnics. And I'd also encourage you to check out any of these related projects, which were great inspirations for me. And I owe a lot to uh, a lot of these projects. Uh, and that's the end of my talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, that was um, Robotnik's Build Android AOSP using Nix, and this is the Q&A session with Daniel. So unfortunately, since the talk was a little over the portion, we probably only have time for one question, and then you'll have to like sort of do that in the breakout rooms. So let me read the first one. The very first question we have is from Edith, and it says, given that the signing is done in a derivation, do the signing keys end up in the next door? So that's a great question, um, and I have uh, the answer is no, that they don't end up in the next door, but there's a couple things you have to do to ensure that that's the case. So I have two options for how you can go about uh, doing the final signing steps, one of which generates a script, like a release script, that will operate outside of Nix and perform the final um, signing step. And the other option is within Nix, but you have to enable a certain sandbox exception to enable access to your, um, your the directory containing your keys. OK, thank you. I guess that was the Q&A session. I am sorry about that. So no the breakout room that you will um, be going to is, I am sorry, one second. Yes, the breakout room is Robotnik. So it's just the same as your talk. And the questions that we collected for you, you can, um, if people who try to, um, give questions, would like those answered, I'm sure that Daniel would be happy to do so in the breakout room. So you can get some nice discussion going on your talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh.